Welcome to The Career Studio, a USU career services podcast that helps you navigate your career path. Thanks for joining us for our Friday face-to-face episode. I'm Marissa Armistead, your host, and I am so excited to have Vlada Yaromenko here with me today. Welcome, Vlada. Thank you so much, Marissa, for having me, and it's an honor to be on the podcast today. I'm excited to talk to you today. We're excited to have you. Well, Vlada is a business development analyst for the Economic Development Corporation of Utah. Previous to that position, she co-chaired the Host Youth Planning Subcommittee for the 68th United Nations Civil Society Conference in Salt Lake City, and she was vice president of P. PR and membership for the UN Women Utah chapter. Her last experience before graduating and prior to her position as co-chair for the UN conference was an internship in Washington, D.C., working with young professionals in foreign policy. So, (laughs) Vlada, I always start with, if I can, I always start with a fun fact. And Mm -hmm. you mentioned that you are a violinist. In fact, you actually played for the Munich International Orchestra at one point when you lived abroad in Germany. So tell me more about this amazing experience. Yes, certainly. I am a violinist. And uh, during my junior year, Uh, It's always been my dream to live in Europe and I'm European, but I mean, I lived in a different part of Europe, (laughs) Eastern Europe. (laughs) Uh, I always wanted to live in like Western Europe, just travel around and finally my dream came true and I decided, okay, well, I'm going to go live abroad in Germany, do a semester abroad there. So as uh, I mentioned, I'm a violinist and I've been playing violin since I was six and I was like, well, you know, I'll take my violin with me because I just went to do a study abroad for just towards my degree in international studies, but not really anything for violin and then when I got there I was like I'll take my violin it's okay although it did add a lot of problems trying to carry it in the plane (laughs) anyway it's always a problem for me but um, when I got there during the orientation day at the university a quartet came to play and I was like wow this is so cool and they were saying well we are the Munich International Orchestra local orchestra in town you guys should join like we welcome international students so come audition here's the date I was like well should I do it or should I not because you know I'm in a new country I don't know like first of all I don't know anything about Germany or German for that matter so okay I did I did go to the audition and I got accepted and they were like yeah you should join which violin do one like first or second like well whatever guys you 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 need me in so I'll, I'll join and so I got to join the orchestra well the problem was that the orchestra the rehearsal was all in German so oh I just got to sit there <laughs> I'm like okay I guess I'll try to learn German this way I had always had to ask my stand partner like what is going on and but it did help me improve my German though besides taking German classes that was a good place to practice so oh it was goodness. pretty fun I really enjoyed it and we got to play actually they were playing all the russian composers during that semester so i got to play like tchaikovsky baradin stravinsky and we played with a really incredible young violinist as well so it was a great experience. wow talk about an immersive experience <laughs> yeah definitely <laughs> well that's great and you know one of the first questions i wanted to ask you is i know that you have this love of music and international travel and i was curious it sounds like you've been playing for a long time but where did those loves come from yeah it's really interesting none of my family members are musicians um i guess my mom tried piano at some point but she when i when i turned six she just took me to this music school in Ukraine and I was actually supposed to play piano and and I played a little bit in kindergarten and so we came to the music school and a teacher met us at the at the steps and she's like come on into my room and then she said well I'm not a pianist I'm actually a violinist and she showed me this violin and the right away I was like no I don't want piano I'll play violin and that's how I started playing violin and so I've been playing since I was six and played all my life wanted to be professional um, then decided otherwise <laughs> obviously and then for travel, I decided that I really liked traveling, I guess, when I moved to the United States, because in Ukraine, I've done some traveling, but it was just, I was a kid, you know, I didn't really understand much. But here I got to explore the States. I actually got to travel with my youth symphony. I got to visit a lot of States that way. Wow. So that's how I fell in love. And then I went to Germany and started traveling every weekend during my exchange. So like, well, traveling is fun. So I'll, I'll travel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. So it's pretty cool. Were there any crazy stories? I've, I'm trying to think, you know, whenever I go somewhere new, I feel like there's always a crazy story. Is there any any stories that come to mind from your travel? <laughs> yeah, you know, when I was in India, I, um, well, as I said, in Germany, I used to travel every weekend and I visited the new country. So I thought, okay, well, I'm pretty good at traveling now, right? So I was in <laughs> India and then I was sitting there on the, it was Friday night, I think. On the Friday night, I was like, well, tomorrow's the weekend. What will I do? Like, I need to do something. So I decided to buy a ticket to go to Jaipur, which is like, uh, I was in Delhi and I decided to go to Jaipur. And I was like, well, okay, I'll just buy a ticket and train. It's already 10 p.m. and the train is at 6 a.m. And I was like, well, 
And I was like, my supervisor will come with me. And we, we became very good friends. So we decided to go. And then on the train, I did not do any research, first of all. Then I was like, well, I'll do it on the train. And on the train, the internet did not work. I was oh, like, no. what is going on? And so we met these two European girls on the train. We were talking to them and then the train stopped. And I was like, well, should like when when do we have to get out i cannot check on my phone because i don't have internet and i accidentally opened google maps and it showed me that your hotel is one mile away i was like what i need to get out so i grabbed my bags and i get out of the train and these girls are asking me are we supposed to get out too i said i don't know your itinerary so i don't oh know oh my gosh and so we got out and then we learn that the police are taking exams so they have banned the suspended mobile internet for two days in that city in, in the state. Yeah, in Rajasthan. I was like, what is going on? I've never heard of this. Well, I go along with my day and then I'm just walking sightseeing uh, later in the day and I hear my name. Someone's calling my name. I'm like, no, no one could be calling my name in India. You know, I'm in the city that I just arrived to today. And like, I, I just keep walking and then I hear my name again and I was like, I turn around and one of those girls is running up to me. She said, we saw you walking along the street and we asked our taxi driver to stop so we can jump about because we lost them we couldn't connect with them through the internet oh they ended goodness. up going two hours away for different sites so <laughs> they did not get out there yeah it was really crazy to like actually meet them inside like you know india has over a billion people and i was able to find them still wow that's just one crazy story i mean there's others like yeah friend, I getting love arrested it. in prague and it was crazy <laughs> not for anything bad he was just he put up a drone in the air and they like the police took him because apparently we were at the presidential palace. Oh no. So we did something bad. <laughs> you know? You're sharing all of your secrets, Vada. Better better be careful uh, here. <laughs> I did not get arrested. I was all I was a good citizen. So. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, well, this is this is a great lead-in. So next, I would love to hear a little bit about some of the other early on experiences. And you mentioned being in India, so I'd love to hear more about that. But talk to us about some of those internships and jobs that you had. I know mm -hmm. that you worked for Santa Fe Pro Music and had an internship there. You were a Russian language tutor, mm -hmm. you did a teaching English internship in India. So talk to us about some of those experiences, what you learned about yourself during that time. Yeah, certainly. Well, my first ever internship was the Santa Fe Pro Musica internship. And I was a senior in high school and I had a free period. I was like, well, you know, I need to take some class. I don't know what to do. I want to like do something cool. So I said, okay, well, why don't I try to do an internship? So I spoke with some of my teachers and they said like, you should do an internship with Pro Musica. So I ended up going there, uh, I think a few times a week or every day maybe I, I don't remember it was when i was in a senior in high school but i got to reorganize their library so i got to see all these old manuscripts of ba it was pretty cool and it, it actually it was the first like office job that i've had you know yeah and then so that was a good experience and then when i was a russian tutor that's actually a really funny story one day i come home and my stepdad says well i posted an ad on craigslist for you that you're a russian tutor i was like okay i guess i have a job now <laughs> So, um, yeah, I'm like, okay, cool. And so I ended up getting quite a few students. Like, I think I had four at once. And then actually I got to meet really interesting people. I even got to work with a gentleman. He was translating poems for this Russian poet, Osim Mandlishtam. And he was translating this book called Varonish Notebooks. And I got to work with him on pronunciation of the poems. And so it's a published book. He has published it since then. And his name is Andrew Davis. It's called Varonish Notebooks, if anyone's interested. But it's pretty interesting poetry. So I guess I got to get a lot out of this experience that my stepdad just pulled me into, you know. Wow. Well, and remind me, okay, so how many lang languages do you speak? Because I know you're fluent in a couple. <laughs> Well, I am fluent, like Ukrainian and Russian are both my first languages. So I'm fluent in them. I'm trying to be fluent in English, doesn't really work sometimes. <laughs> and I'm like half Spanish. I mean, I took up to intermediate. I, I took five years of Spanish in high school and between college. Wow. I even wrote a political essay in Spanish once, but now I can say hola. That's about it. No. <laughs> I mean, I can watch Spanish movies and understand, but so I would, I would so say cool. three and a half. There I you tried, go. I tried like Chinese and that I don't remember either. So, <laughs> But so uh, cool. going back to teaching English, actually, when I was teaching English in India, 
I got to work with this really sweet kid and they were from like a poorer neighborhoods in a, like in the area where I was working and so cute, so sweet. But the only thing was that they did not speak English. I did not speak Hindi. So that was a little, sometime really complicated because I would have to ask this nine-year-old girl to translate for me because she was the only one who actually spoke English really well. I mean, we, we tried to like play some games. We tried to, you know, do as much as we can, like try to practice some vocabulary, some words phrases but uh, it was definitely sometimes frustrating just because I was frustrated with myself that I, I wish I knew Hindi like you know so that I could at least understand what these children were saying to me one my friend translated for me once and they were saying the sweetest things and I, I feel like I missed out a little bit on that but at least we got to play music together as well I brought my violin there and oh we very to cool together Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, so looking at, at these different experiences, kind of going back to that original question, what would you say you learned about yourself and kind of mm -hmm. some of the professional goals you recognized you had from those experiences? Yeah, you know, what I definitely learned about myself is I like to put myself in tough situations, I guess, because, well, I was put in a really tough situation when I moved to the United States because I did not speak English. I spoke like three words, like tomato, cucumber, something, you know, really, really <laughs> basic words. So I definitely learned from that experience. And then when I went to India, I think I thrive in situations like that because I get to improve. I get to get better at what I'm doing. I get better communication because, you know, when you only have like not, you don't have verbal communication, you have signs and you like, you have to communicate in a certain way. It's a really gives you great skills or being able to talk to about anyone because that's what you learn to do. Like there's no other way, you have no choice. I also, I guess for professional goals, I got to understand that I really love working with people and I really like doing something that's really meaningful, you know. I was working with these kids and for them, maybe like for me, I was in India just for a small period of time, but for them, you know, this was a big experience having some foreigner come and teach them and play music with them, you know. So it was definitely like heartwarming experience. And I understood that that's what I would like to do. Like change people's lives for the better. Absolutely. Oh, I love it. And I'm getting little goosebumps as we're talking. <laughs> oh, so Thank cool. You. So after your internship in India, you came back to Salt Lake and that's where you finished your degree at the University of Utah and you earned mm -hmm. your bachelor's degree in international and global studies. And you also minored in music, always keeping that music piece yeah. everywhere you go, it seems. While you were at the U, you also worked as a student career ambassador, which is where our paths crossed. Mm -hmm. And then you were also working as an assistant court master for the symphony. So I'm curious, and I guess maybe part of this answer has already come, but I'm curious, why did you choose to pursue that minor in music in addition to your bachelor's degree? Yeah, as I mentioned, all my life I've been playing and I was really little when I started. Although some people in the United States start as, as early as three, I did not start that early. But I always had dreams about becoming a professional violinist, going to a conservatory, getting my degree there, probably playing for an orchestra later in life. I even came to the United States to keep pursuing violin because I went to a music college in Ukraine for one year before we had to move here. And I finished uh, performing arts high school here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And in my senior year, I just realized that, you know, I love violin, but honestly, practicing is not my favorite thing. I'm not really competitive in music is either, you know, like I love it for my own good. Enjoyment, like, own right. Sake. Yeah, for my own enjoyment. But like, I, I'm not really like I, I participated in a lot of competition when I was a child and they were successful, but it never gave me like a thrill, you know. So I just decided I think I like something international because all my friends were international, you know, not all of them, but like. A lot of them were international and I just thought, well, I really like culture. Like I really like learning about different people, different way of lives, but I love music too. And that's another way you can learn about people, you know? So I just decided to keep my music with me and then pursue the minor in school. And that's what helped me still be involved in the music community and play in a symphony. And it was wonderful because, you know, every Wednesday night I would come there and just for three hours, I'd just forget what my life looks like and just be involved in music, you know? Although my life was great, it just, I would still forget to laugh. Yeah. No, and I think you bring up such a great point. You know, sometimes as young children, especially, we have a dream and it's 
not that those dreams can't come to pass or that they're bad or anything like that, but sometimes they're not the dream that we develop into. And so I think you bring up a great point of, you know, minors are a great way to stay connected to things that we love, but don't necessarily want to pursue professionally. So I think that's a great insight. Yeah. And I mean, it took me everywhere. Like I still was able to play in Germany and I was still able to play in India and, you know, it's still always there. Like right now I'm still able to play with my friends and with my best friends from high school. We are still able to get together and play music. And a lot of them are actually professional musicians. And even though I'm not, I'm still able to share that with them, you know? So it's a great way to be connected to that part of the world, to the arts. I love that. Yes. Such good insights. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so moving forward, I'm curious to learn, you know, during your education, I know you went to a, a couple of different universities, but during your education, what were some skills or knowledge that you received that have really benefited you in your current role? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely a lot of skills that you need in the real world, world. <laughs> but I think the most important one is definitely communication skills, being able to communicate with people from different areas of life. Because, you know, right now in my role, I work with a lot of business people. Before that, I worked with a lot of NGOs. So it's a completely different world, although they sometimes overlap, but it's still a very really different kind of communication that you have to use. And especially when you're in school, you have, you have to use even a different different kind of communication. It's more academic focus. Absolutely. So communication is definitely one skill that I got out of my education. And then definitely multitasking. You know, you have 10 assignments at the same time. You have to be able to complete all of them. Each assignment is completely different topic. So you're like, okay, well, let me try to compartmentalize inside <laughs> my head. So that definitely helped. The knowledge, uh, I would say, you know, just I love learning from people, although books are cool way to learn. I mean, that's a good way to learn. That's how we learn. But it's just when you're in the university in that setting, you meet professors, you meet students, you meet advisors. It's just going there and learning from these people, like from their experience, what they have done, how they have lived their life or how they're pursuing the things that they like. That actually really, really helped me. I think without the mentors, the advisors that I had in school, like I wouldn't be where I am today. I'm so grateful to them like for providing me with that knowledge. And of course, professors as well. Like I've taken some very cool classes like inequality through music and film, completely different perspective from what I have learned in other classes, you know? So definitely I'm really grateful to the people. Yeah, I think that's a great point. And then kind of shifting gears a little bit. So as a career ambassador, I'm curious how that experience led to your next step of working as a young professional in foreign policy. What did that transition look like? For all of my internships, of course, I had to write a lot of cover letters, resumes, and Megan at the Career Center, she was my career advisor, and I would visit Megan quite often to make sure my resume was okay, you know, like my cover letters were clear, and then that's how I learned about the the position with the career in the career center as a career ambassador. And so then when I got hired, I got an opportunity to actually like see other people and help other students and work with other students. And a lot of times students come and, well, you you know that as well, since you work in that and you keep working in this position that students come and they say, well, I am lacking in communication skills, let's say. And, but they're from like Peru, right? And they're like, well, <laughs> you're in a foreign country right now. That's exactly what you're doing to communicating with me. So it really helped me actually like look at people and understand what their strengths are how they can phrase it so it looks like a strength and because everyone has has strengths it's just really difficult to recognize that sometime for yourself and i think because i read so much cover letters so much resumes i got pretty good at it right so i was like well you know i participated in a class prior to going to india which we actually went to dc and presented the policy on the hill so i really wanted to do an internship but i thought you know i'm supposed to be graduating soon so i don't know if i will be pursuing one but then After that, I was like, well, you know, I really, first of all, the career ambassador job was so meaningful to me. Second of all, I was like, I don't really want to finish school. Like, I love that environment and I want to still do something with my life. That's, you know, something's missing. So I decided to postpone my graduation by one semester and apply for an internship instead. And that's how I ended up having my internship with Young Professionals in Foreign Policy, which really aligned with my international background, you know? Yeah. That internship was definitely the culmination of my college career. It was incredible. 
Very cool. Well, and I have to say one of the most rewarding aspects, I think, of working in career services is helping students and and just people identify their strengths, just like you talk about and and helping them articulate what that means, you know, in the job setting, what that, Mm -hmm. you know, what value it has. And I think that's so fun and and it's so cool that it kind of led you to your next step. Well, Mm -hmm. I'm also really interested to learn more about your experience as vice president of PR and membership for UN Women USA, which is a really cool nonprofit organization that is dedicated to working for gender equality and women's economic empowerment. So talk to us a little bit about how you found that organization and what pieces of their mission really resonated with you. It's pretty interesting how I found this because this was also an internship at the beginning. So this was my first ever, in, well, first ever internship in college that I did. I had participated you know, in all the classes that I needed in order to graduate. And then I was constantly talking to my advisor, academic advisor, and then it turns out I had a free block during my schedule. So I was like, wow, you know, I don't know if I want to take another class. How about an internship? So I said, okay, well, I'll go to the Hinkley Institute, which is a, where most of the internships come out from. And so I went there and I discussed my plans with uh, Morgan over there. And she said, well, there's some organizations that could really be interesting for you. And one of them was UN Women. So I applied to that and got a call back and got interviewed and became an intern. So after I finished my internship, that's when I was promoted to vice president of PR and membership for UN Women, the Utah chapter. And I stayed on until the chapter was closed last year. Unfortunately, it was closed. But what piece of their mission resonated with me was that we still struggle for equality here in the United States, but even so in the rest of the world, especially working, you know, with in, in India, even proved that even more to me. And I was working with UN Women before India, but then I was still working with them after India as well. And it just really inspired me to stay there and try to pass, you know, some laws that would at least increase like the economic environment. So women don't have to get paid like 60 cents for the the same job that the men gets paid for one dollar, you know, one dollar for. So it's definitely something that's unfair. And we spend as much time, as much money going to school and having these experiences just so that we cannot have the same opportunities. I've done a lot of research with like young girls not being able to access education in countries in Africa or even countries in India. And, uh, you know, if they're on their period, you know, it's just something unfair um, that a woman has to stay back and like uh, the boy in the family will have to get his education instead of the girl being able to. And plus it's been more dangerous for the women to get education in those countries as well, because sometimes they live like 17 miles away from the school and they cannot walk at night. So that's definitely what we fundraised for at uh, UN Women. We were fundraising for all the UN projects. So we just give all of our money to the UN and the UN Women and they decide where to bring those funds really interesting experience. And I'm curious, well, I guess we'll move into my next question. So looking at your current job as a business development Mm -hmm. analyst, first Mm -hmm. of all, I'd love to know a little bit more about what that job entails. So talk to us a little bit about what the day-to-day looks like for that job. Well, that's exactly why I love my job because the day-to-day looks really (laughs) different. So I'm a business development analyst at the Economic Development Corporation of Utah. So actually, this is a nonprofit, a private nonprofit organization that has a pretty interesting funding model. So one third of our funding comes from the governor's office of economic development. Then one third comes from cities and counties. And then one third comes from private organizations such as construction firms, law firms, real estate firms, basically any company that's interested in economic growth in the state. And so my job uh, as a business development analyst is basically to help with project management. If let's say a company is looking to come to Utah and um, they want to establish a 100 person business here, we work with businesses from like two people to up to 5,000 person. So if they want to come here, we work with the clients to help them navigate Utah, to help them find a location, to provide research for them. Basically, we are the corporate recruitment manager for the state of Utah. So wow. that's, And that's what, what I do is manage those kinds of projects, help businesses make Utah their home and help Utah businesses expand. Very cool. Well, and I'm curious, how does this job align with your interests and strengths? And I know we've talked a lot about your involvement of helping people and communication, but talk to me about, you know, how do you see this job aligning with your interests and, and your strengths? Yeah. So 
I definitely learned throughout my life as I moved to the United States that I love people. I love communicating with people, love being around people. I, I have a pretty easy time meeting people as well. So one of, my, one of my strengths is definitely networking. And so a big part of my job is networking. So what they say at our office is our job there is to be a mile wide, but an inch deep. So basically we may may not know all the answers, but we know everyone who knows the answers. So as a project manager, I have to, for example, if a client has, we had a client had a question about seismic activity in the state. We have to know who to call. If <laughs> Like we might not know the answer, but we know we have to know like, oh, like Bill from this office can help us, you know, like, yeah, we can get you an answer. So that's definitely um, one of my strengths is networking. And then for interest, I've always been interested in the business side of things. But since my degree is not in business, international studies, you know, I was like, well, how do I get into business? And I did the career track with the career center. We got to meet some businesses in Seattle. That was really interesting. That was my first experience probably meeting with businesses. I've always wanted to learn about this business side of thing. And that's why I really like my job because every day is so different because we work with public and partners like cities and counties as well as private. So we work with business. So I basically get to incorporate my previous experience working with like policy governments with business. So definitely that's how my interests connect here in this matter. So cool, Vlada. So, so cool. Well, I, you know, we're just about out of time here. So I do want to wrap up with one final question. And that Mm -hmm. question is, if you could offer one piece of advice to students about gaining real world experience through an internship, what would it be? I would say, because I've heard some people, they're thinking, okay, well, I need to graduate as soon as possible. You know, I graduated, I was 23, about to be 24. So I didn't graduate that early. I went to school for five years and I purposefully extended my graduation so it would be five years just so I could get that internship, real life experience internship. So I would recommend that just to take adventure, uh, adventure, yes, take adventures <laughs> as much as possible. Take advantage of all the things the university has to offer while you're still in school. Like once you graduate, that's it, you know, you have to go find yourself real world experiences by yourself. This way you still have that, you know, school backing you up. You have all the advisors, all the coordinators who are there to help you and assist you. So I would definitely say pursue all the internships, study abroad, anything that can get you real world experiences. Like my last internship with Young Professionals in Foreign Policy was so incredible because I got to manage the selection process for the American delegates for the Y7 and Y20 summits, which is incredible. You know, wow. I would never get like this kind of opportunity if I was somewhere else. But through this, I got to meet so many people. I get to so many events, like with ambassadors, almost every week I would go to an event where you could easily meet an ambassador and speak with them about, well, anything you'd like. But you get this real life experience through this kind of jobs. And also I got to manage a lot of projects at the same time because I had a lot of responsibilities working there. Like, see, I gave up one semester to graduate later just so I could do that internship. And it was so worth it. And I actually got to travel to the UAE as well, which I did not expect for the internship. So it was really, really cool. So such great insights. And and I think that's a great point that you make of really utilizing the time that you have when you are in school. And some people can afford to stay in it for only four years and may have to take those opportunities sooner rather than later. And I think for anyone, that's great advice is to Mm -hmm. start as young as you can. Students can start taking internships. You don't have to wait until your senior year. You can get involved much sooner than that. And just like you said, you know, the sooner you start getting involved, the more opportunities you have, the more connections you have that can then lead to more opportunities. And so That's a great advice of just hopping in, start getting that experience as soon as you can. So love that. Well, Lada, thank you so much for sharing your unique experiences and for being here with us today. You've brought such a fun, uh, lively energy to the show. It's just been a pleasure to have you today. Thank you. It's my honor. And I'm so honored that you have invited me to uh, be a part of this. Thank you so much, Marissa. It was a time really well spent and I enjoyed our conversation today. Thanks for joining us here at the Career Studio today. Please remember to join us next week as we continue to discuss this month's theme of getting real world experience with an internship.